Hey guys, it's Elisa with a step one slash step two question for you today. Go ahead and pause this, do it on your own, and then come back and we'll do it together. A 20-year-old man presents to the emergency department with complaints of shortness of breath and hemoptysis over the past week. He has no known sick contacts. He has no past medical history, and he drinks a few bottles of beer on the weekend. He takes no medications. His temperature is 98.6, pulse is 91, respirations are 21, and blood pressure is 148 over 89. Physical exam shows inspiratory crackles at both lung bases. The remainder of the exam is normal. Hemoglobin is 13.2, leukocytes 9.9, platelets 199. Your analysis shows proteinuria of 2 plus, 69 right blood cells for high power field, and 1.2 white blood cells. Chest x-ray shows pulmonary infiltrates. Further testing is most likely to show which of the following. And our options, which are already scary looking, but bear with me. Increased anti-PLA2R antibodies, increased, increased serum IgA antibodies, increased CINCA antibodies, increased PINCA antibodies, increased anti-GBM antibodies, or increased anti-DSDNA antibodies. So the first thing we do is we analyze our patient. So he's 28 years old. He's pretty young. He doesn't really take in much alcohol. What's important is that he has high blood pressure. His blood pressure is 148 over 89, which is quite high for someone who's 28 and is pretty healthy. Now, he's also had these symptoms for only one week. That's important as well. Um, what else? He has hemoptysis, so it's a lung issue. And he has a renal issue. He has microscopic hematuria as well as proteinuria, right? So microscopic and some macroscopic as well, actually, because um, actually, no, no, uh, sorry, excuse me, no macroscopic because we do not see red urine, but he does have microscopic hematuria as well as proteinuria um, and only a few white blood cells, but this is within normal limits. Chest x-ray shows pulmonary infiltrates. Um, and so before you even see the answer choices, this question stem should have been leading down the line of glomerulonephritis. Um, if you have an idea of what you're looking for before you look at answer choices, this is my general rule when I tutor, uh, you're more likely to answer the question more correctly because you won't be fooled by the test writers um, when you're reading the actual answer choices. You already know what you want and you're gonna get it. So let's go through the answer choices. Increased anti-PLA2R antibodies. So the disease is primary idiopathic membranous nephropathy. Now, this is a nephrotic syndrome and not a nephritic syndrome. It also does ha not have any pulmonary complications. Um, so this one's probably not our disease. Let's move on. Increased serum IgA antibodies, that is consistent with IgA nephropathy, aka IgA vasculitis. However, with IgA vasculitis, you would see other things like abdominal pain, joint pain, and palpable purpura, such as henlich shanlain purpura. Um, this causes nephritic syndrome, which is consistent with what we see here. Um, and it's actually often um, seen after some sort of viral uh, infectious process. So let's say someone had cough, dyspnea, something, and then a few days later, they present with um, you know, blood in their urine and joint pain and abdominal pain. You might be thinking IJ nephropathy. However, our patient does not have a fever, does not have leukocytosis, so we are not thinking an infectious etiology. He also doesn't really have abdominal pain or joint pain or palpable pur purpura, so this is also crossed out. Now the next option is increased C Inca antibodies. And this is very classic for Wegener's granulomatosis or uh, now the board exams call it granulomatosis with polyangiitis. And this is a great answer. However, these patients have a history of chronic rhinosinusitis. They also have some ocular manifestations, um, ulcerating granulomas, and then possibly vascular purpura. But very classically, it's a patient who presents with you know, chronic rhinosinusitis, um, as well as some lung issues and some renal issues. Um, this patient does not have systemic vasculitis and definitely no um, chronic sinusitis. So it's probably not Wagner's. Much of us, I love this answer, and so do the board writers. 
Next option is increased P anca antibody. So that's Trig Strauss disease, or now the boards call it microscopic polyangiitis. Again, these sort of patients would present with small vesicle vasculitis, such as purpura. Um, there would also be some sort of bronchial asthma history or allergic rhinitis, which we don't see in our patient. Next is anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies. Now that is good pasture syndrome. That is another uh, disease that test writers love and they compare it um, to all of these classically. So it's caused by autoantibodies against the non-collagenous domain of the alpha-3 subunit of type 4 collagen. That is a mouthful, but also sometimes in step one, you get a pathology um, or histology question, and they want you to be very detailed about um, you know, what the pathophys of this disease is. So type 4 collagen is a component of every basement membrane, and the alpha-3 subunits are only present in specific tissues, aka the lungs and the kidneys, which is what we are having afflictions with. So any autoantibodies and good pasture syndrome uh, damage the glomerular basement membrane and the alveolar basement membrane, which causes nephritic syndrome as well as alveolar hemorrhaging. Um, but there's no systemic vasculitis, unlike the above. So this is a pretty good option, isn't it? The last one is increased anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, which is probably what you will see in SLE. However, you might see it in other immune deficiencies as well. Um, and SLE, importantly, can cause nephritic syndrome. However, you will also see other symptoms in, um, in SLE, and it's also much more common in women. So this is probably not our patient. So the answer is good pasture, aka increased anti-GBM antibodies, which we will review presents with renal issues, lung issues, um, and no vasculitic symptoms. All right, thank you so much for doing this question with me and stay tuned for next week. Thank you.